terrified is beyond scared. Can I just give you a, a, a definition of terrified? Beyond scared. I don't care what the Webster might say. I'm just going to tell you. That when you're terrified, it's beyond scared. When you're terrified, you, you, you'll grab anything. You, you'll jump out any door. You'll jump through any hole, go through any window. Because you are in a state of hysteria. You don't know. You've lost all control of where you are and what's going on. The situation has overcome you. And when you're terrified, you'll do some crazy stuff. Well, amen. amen. Terrified people don't have any rationale anymore. Terrified people don't think. Terrified people get to the point they, they forget. You can turn it down. Terrified people, they, they get to the point where they don't think. They forget what God said. Terrified people. You look at the people in the grocery stores and, and they and they just buying this and buying that and filling up baskets and, and getting this and this. You they go down the road and just get every roll of toilet tissue, they can get every piece of paper towel they can get. Or they just stacking beans and getting meat and meat and just stacking it up and like, okay, they're not gonna sell another day. We gotta get ours now. Those are terrified folk. But see, when saints of God, it's a bad thing for a saint to get terrified. <laughs> I will tell you in the book of Ezra in the seventh chapter, uh, long about in, in, six, in, in the sixth chapter and so forth, when Ezra got blessed to do what he wanted to do, you know what happened to Ezra? Ezra popped off and told the king that his God, his God was going to deliver them and take them through and all of this. And when the king gave him permission to go, then Ezra had to got, he got to thinking. He said, I, he was too embarrassed to ask the king, can you give us some soldiers that escort us? Because we got to take all this gold and copper and all this stuff to Jerusalem. You know what he had to do? He, he went on a fast. <laughs> he, put on a, he went on a fast and he put everybody on a fast and they sought the Lord. You know what the Lord did? God gave him safe passage. Right. But if he had got, but see, he was embarrassed to ask the king because he boasted about who his God is. Saints of God, listen to Sister Hazel testify. How many of us are boasted about who our God is? How many of us have told the people in our job, my God? Y'all know we you say that, oh, my God, my God shall. Anybody remember that scripture? My God shall supply. How many? All oh, my needs. Some of y'all can just say it either, boy. According to his riches and glory, I, Christ Jesus. But when you get terrified, you forget about my God shall. Then you start doing the shall. I shall steal. I shall do whatever I have to do to survive. No. Corona ain't never had nothing to do with God. God ain't never been moved by no famine. God has never been moved by anything because everything that come out, he got his hand on it. Ain't nothing going to happen that God doesn't. People, God didn't go to sleep. He ain't like Baal. He didn't go on no vacation. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I've been praying. My prayer is this. My prayer is, God, don't take away the spanking until the message has gotten across. That's my prayer. The saints, you are going to have to suffer with the wicked. In 1980, when we had over 100 days of 100-degree weather, don't you know, just because you were saved, that didn't mean it was 75 at your house and 100 at your neighbor's house. Your grass got parts, too. I remember years ago, we lived 3341 East Illinois. In 1980, that ground cracked so. I said, oh, God, I ain't never seen nothing like it. Now, I remember a little small rabbit fell off in one of those cracks. And I couldn't get him out. So when it started raining and the ground, it just, it was just his grave. I'm talking about all around foundation. You could go out there and water the ground, and you could just stick a water hose off in one of them cracks. Man, and water run all day. And the crack never closed up. Maybe some of y'all wasn't around Dallas in 1980. 1980, it got hot. Everything got hot. It burned up grass. They just quit watering. They even told you to quit watering. Because it wasn't doing any good. Man, you turn a sprinkler on and water out there running them cracks, and you go out there and look. It's like, like where's the water going? Like it's going to hell or something. Where is it going? It's, it's gone. And God shook up a bunch of folk. You know what God's doing now? He's shaking up a bunch of folk. 
He's shaking, he's shaking up a bunch of preachers. He's shaking up a bunch of church folk. There's some folk, they're going to scheme and connive, and they're not going to change at all. But there's that small group of people that what's going on now is going to run them to the house of God. There's people that's professing to know God. This stuff that's going on now is going to make them tighten up on their, com their confession. Then there's some folk, they just going to do whatever. Then there's some folk, that old conniving, crooked spirit that they had before they got saved is going to come back. You know what troubles me now? What troubles me now is not about me, but what troubles me now is the people that I'm passed over. What troubles me now, the people that hear my radio broadcast, the people that say they know God. Because this scripture says a whole lot. Watch what he said. He said, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. What do you mean? The end is not even close. One scripture said the end is not yet, but it's not by and by. That means it, uh, it's a while. What we see now, this corona thing, this is just it. And let me say, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm the wrong one. That's maybe just me. Sister Roger said, you know, baby, she just have, she have to keep me sort of geared down. But all the stuff that I'm hearing, Something ain't sounding right. You ever heard something and you say, your kids ever come tell you something, and, and what they say you hear it, but it's some pieces missing. How I many ever put a puzzle together and you got some, you got some pieces missing? The puzzle is finished, but you got this. There's a piece over in the one over you couldn't find them or whatever. There's some pieces missing in this thing. Somebody said, "Well, pass them." Well. It, it, I'm, just, I'm just a practical person, and I think practical. There's some pieces missing in this thing. That's too much stuff that's happening that's coincidental. There's too much stuff that's happening without somebody orchestrating it. Now, you all know that if gasoline was $3.50 a gallon or better, with everything else going on now, the whole country would have just went on down the toilet. But just before all this happened, Russia... And I ran with that, and then I, the Iranians started dumping oil in the market, and then the price of uh, crude went down, and then gasoline. We were leaving, coming to church tonight, over by our house, over by our house, where we live, 7-Eleven. Their gas is a dollar and 68 cents a gallon. But just think about it. If we were paying $3 and some a gallon, with, along with what we paying now for food and everything else, what's that word? Terrified. There'll be a whole lot of terrified folk. There's some, there's some commotions going on. And then they go to the point of saying, okay, they're going to give everybody to help us out $1,000. That means Sister Roz and I, we would get 1000 apiece. We don't have any children, so we wouldn't get the 500 But there's some of y'all that you would get 1000 apiece. Your wife would get 1000 Then every child would get 500 That's going to help you out. But now they, they, they arguing over that getting the stimulus deal going, so it ain't happening. Not yet. So when you don't do it, you're creating pressure on people that's being laid off. They say, well, so many people unemployed, but it's too much coincidental stuff. They come, they, you know, sometimes, and I, I've been asked, expose the devil what's really going on in this. And they were interviewing a, a doctor from Texas A&M the other night on the news. Can't remember what channel, I think it was five. They were interviewing this doctor over on, this, on the screen. He wasn't there, you know. And check this out. This doctor's talking. He said, well, we've been working on corona for four or five years. He said this on the news. I guess he really wasn't thinking he wasn't supposed to say that. But we've been working on corona for four or five years. Then they tell us they got folks on the news deal one news cast is over here, the other's over here. Folk doing the weather and stuff from home. They got ESPN or whatever it is. They got a, Sister Rod said, it looks like they put a, a, another leaf in the table. I said, no, baby, they put another table beside the table. And, they, and, and now the table is so wide, two tables wide. And all the commentators are sitting around at distance. But we got a president, when they have a press meeting, they up there like sardines in a can. Now, I'm not 
not, I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. You're telling everybody else, social distance. But you all up there talking, and y'all rubbing all up against each other. Y'all that tight. But well, well, what are you telling us to do social distance for? And you all having a press conference, and you all stuck up there together. Now, President Trump just went on a trip. And he had some folk with him, Gates and some more of them, that came in contact with a man that's supposed to have had the virus. These people, Ted Cruz, Gates, I think, and Connor Day, they quarantined themselves. Gates flew on uh, Air Force One with Trump. But then President Trump, you haven't quarantined yourself, and he was asked by the media, well, I'll I, I, I probably take the test. <coughs> now, what makes me think if there's anything out there, you already got the antidote. There was a movie, Sherlock Holmes. And in the movie, Sherlock Holmes, Lord Blackwell had created a poison, and his intention was to take over the English Parliament. And all of those that was with, and there was a whole lot of Masonic stuff in it, a whole lot of it. Anyway, there were people from the United States, they all were working together. I'm just, I'm going to give us, you know, sometimes, I pass you, I, I, I watch stuff to learn. When you look at the movie, The, the Legend of Zorro, uh, was it Antonio Vendetta? He was Zorro, right? But y'all remember what they were trying to do? You get the chance, go back and look at it. There was a, a secret organization, a secret order, and they were trying to annex California. I'm just saying. But in the movie Sherlock Holmes, what Lord Blackwell had done, all the people that was part of the English Parliament, they had, didn't know everything that was going on, just like we got a lot of people now in Washington, D.C. don't know what's going on. So what he did, they came up with a poison. They were going to bring the poison through that air-conditioned vent or the heating system. Didn't have air conditioning, but through the heating system. And everybody that had the antidote had already taken it. Therefore, those that didn't have it, they would die. This is a movie. They would die, those that didn't have the antidote. How is President Trump, and why is it he isn't being forced, since we're being forced, why is it he's not being forced to take the, the test? Now we just find out Pence, some of his cabinet, they've been exposed, and Pence has said, well, he's going to be tested. But Trump ain't said nothing yet about it. he's going to be tested. I'm just saying. <laughs> What's that word? Commotion. Commotions. We got all kind of stuff. Commotion. And Jake Chapel get on there, and he looked like somebody told him his mama died. And he's all long-facing and sad on CNN. And he's interviewing, talking about all the commotion, and he's asking the psychiatrist, what should people do when, when they're when they're confined to their home and they can't get out and they can't do this and they can't do that. And you start getting cabin fever and all, and the psychiatrist will say, well, you need to, uh, you can go to the Facebook, you can play games, you can, you can look at television, you can call people, you can intermingle and just talk, and you, you keep yourself motivated. Like, you're going to do, huh? transcendental meditation, just, just, but ain't nobody saying nothing about God. Ain't nobody saying nothing about praying. Listen, we've had stuff not even close to what we have in now, and they had a national day of prayer. You haven't you heard anybody say anything about prayer? Sigmund Freud went crazy almost trying to deal with, I ain't talking about the brain, I'm talking about the mind. But they ain't asking nobody. Well, and li listen to this. Where's all these big mouth preachers with these mega churches? Where's the pastor of First Baptist? 
when he want to talk about how Trump is going to win and when he came to Texas and he was running his flap, he always got something to say about something. He quiet as a church. Where's Jake sitting now? You don't hear these people saying nothing. Why nobody want to ask the preacher, what did the Bible say? Nobody want to hear, what did the Bible say? My Bible tell me if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Now, see some of y'all cracking up. You know what I know? You ain't been praying. You haven't been seeking God. You see, you can say what you want to. When you're in church, you can get in here and look like everything well and working with. But when you get by yourself, when you don't, when you don't have Apostle Rod, when you don't have Sister A and different one, someone talking to you, Sister Mac, and they encourage you, tell you when you're by yourself and you got to disciple stuff. When you go on the job and you're working with all these unsaved folk, and they're talking all this chaos and all this, all these commotions going on. On your job, commotion. In the house, commotion. You got family folk having commotion because, see, when they don't know what you know, commotions take over. And if you ain't careful, you'll be sucked into their commotion. You got to be able to stand your own. Ah, you got to be able to stand still. Oh, because when you've done all to do this thing, stand there for. When folks get to ask me, well, why are you not doing this? I'm not upset by commotion. I'm refu- I refuse to let commotions make me be terrified. Y'all notice on the news, they ain't saying nothing about the locusts in Africa. I ain't getting no help. All the fires in Australia must have just burned out. They're not saying nothing on the news about the recovery in Australia. You ain't heard nothing. I heard one day about the uh, 5.7 earthquake in uh, Salt Lake City. The three earthquakes in California. You ain't heard nothing there. All they talking about is Corona. Everything is Corona. You know why they got, listen people, Every news program has a point. Every news, there's the point of news. They have an agenda. They have a news director. And those people are not just up there talking. They're reading. They up there reading with the teleprompter saying, yeah, yeah. They may be looking. Sometimes they can't help it. They be looking, looking, looking. Even Wolf and all he said, they reading. So they've already put all that together. And then when they get through, then they come here, come Anderson, here come the next one, they come Don. They keep running, and then Fox over there with another version. NBC got another version. Well, they had a, they had a, a press conference the other day, and one of uh, his, time, time, his name escaped me, but one of NBC News reports.